guys, welcome back to the Making It podcast. Um, this week, I am super, super excited to get the, get this guy uh, on the show. Um, really, really amazing conversations. Very interesting. I enjoyed it thoroughly, and I'm, I'm sure you guys will. Um, I guess the, the tagline for this one is, how much would you pay not to be in the media for a data breach? As a company, I think it's really important we protect people. Um, and, and I think this is going to be really relevant to, to people looking to start a company and those actually who have started it and are not sure how to, to best protect their data um, and how to go about it. And it's really, really interesting. So without further ado, really excited to get on with this show and welcome, welcome to Jay Harris. Here we go. Hi guys, welcome to the Making It podcast. Uh, as I've just said, we've got a fantastic guest on the show. So welcome to the show, Jay. Thanks a lot, mate. Glad to be here. Yeah, good stuff. Really excited to have you on. We've got some some really good topics, and and obviously, I, I really do think uh, we can provide some great insight to to startups out there or, or people looking to start a business, and and particularly on the security side of things, which is what Jay focuses in. Uh, we can provide some really good information there. So, I mean, to start it all off, Jay, we'll we'll go from the we'll go from the bottom. Uh, you obviously went to university uh, and graduated in two thousand and ten in 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 computer science. So talk us through how you came to, to the point you are today with, with digital interruption and, and talk us through the process and how you came to that. Yeah. Um, so I kind of wish there was a like a, a good story I could tell about it, to be <laughs> honest. But uh, the truth is, I was just a bit of a nerdy kid. You know, I, I, I liked playing on computers and doing things yeah. with computers. So as I was kind of growing up, it was just something that, that I kind of you know gravitated towards. Um, you know, in, in school, you know, just before university, uh, you know, me and my friends would, um, we were kind of lucky we had a, a IT technician at the school that would encourage us to try and hack the school networks and stuff. Nice. And, you know, he would actually kind of help us and support us, yeah. uh, you know, versus some of my, my friends who, you know, they used to get in a lot of trouble for this, 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 like trying to do these things. We actually had a, someone that was helping us, which was like really awesome. So yeah, I went to university uh, to do comp, uh, comp sci. Uh, I didn't really know what area I, I wanted yeah. to, to kind of work in. I didn't really understand that cybersecurity was a, a field that people were, you know, were actually working. I didn't know it was a job, more just a hobby. So, you know, I went to university, uh, comp sci, got to play with, a, you know, lots of different things, you know, AI, um, programming, software development, things like that. Yeah. Then after university, I started working as a software engineer doing um, like working on access control systems. So yeah. you know, like when you swipe a badge to get into a building, you know, that kind of things, you know, uh, the systems that monitor cameras and, and things. Yeah. So really interesting. Um, but I'm not, I'm not a great programmer. <laughs> you know, I, I enjoy it. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm not one of those people that, that will um, sit down and design things properly. I'm more of like a, you know, slap dash in and out and see, what, see how things go, <laughs> write quick scripts. Yeah. Uh, so um, when the chance came up to move into, into cybersecurity and become an ethical hacker or penetration tester or white hat, mm-hmm. whatever the term you want to use is, uh, it's something I've decided that actually was kind of more in line with my skill set and, and my interests. So I moved to become a pen tester for um, one of the larger consultancies, did that for a few years, uh, got to, I think, like where I felt I, you know, I could be, I couldn't really go beyond where I was at the consultancy. The consultancy that is very much about um, you know, doing the same kind of work, you know, yeah. the same kind of clients all the time. And I felt that security was something that uh, should change, you know, security as it is at the moment with the penetration testing and stuff is very, um, it's kind of like very reactive, I guess. It's very much a point in time. So you get someone to come in, they tell you everything that is bad, like all the bad things, yeah. you know, this, this problem here and this weakness here. Uh, and then and then that person leaves and they just leaves you with a list of all these issues that you don't need to go and fix. Yeah. So I felt that security could change. Yeah, I felt security should change a little bit. So then I started working um, as an internal security uh, tester for a, for a large um, a large company, hoping that I'd be able to have a bit more uh, say in making sure that security was done right from the start. So helping like the developers there to develop 
like good code, use good practices. Yeah. Um, but again, it kind of turned into the same kind of thing where it was very much reactive. Like, hey, we need to get a pen test. Here are the list of issues. Yeah. Fix them, don't fix them. Not my problem anymore. Yeah, um, which is again something that I, I really, yeah, something that I do think should change. Uh, so I felt like that the only thing uh, next after that was was to start my own company where we can really try and uh, you know push um, push this idea that security should be something that people are considering at every stage, you know, right from the the start when they're first creating or designing their, their products um, to the end, you know, things are finished. You know, complete out the door you know we still want to be thinking about security yeah. and how to protect the data of, of our customers so so yeah that was kind of it really just a nerdy kid to someone <laughs> that's trying to i guess do that's do crazy. something that they, they think is is good and yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it sounds like the concept then for for digital interruption which is obviously the company you found co-founded with saskia in in 2017 came on pretty early in your career then really like you obviously very early on, you were conscious that things were, as you said, reactive um, and you kind of, it wasn't done, not that it wasn't done right, but that was how it was always done. And, and you always saw that gap where you need to kind of know, we need to proactively look at this and, and teach people about cybersecurity and about security of, of the business and, and how they can protect that. But obviously... You, 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 you know, you owned your skills, you, you worked in it for, a, well, five, was it, was it five years you worked in, in cy internal cybersecurity, roughly? <laughs> yeah, well, well, so the thing, the funny thing with, with like security and a lot of tech stuff generally mm. is that uh, a lot of people have, have been doing it for a lot longer than than they than it says on their like CVs, right? Yeah. Um, and that's one of the benefits really of, of working in a field like this. We, we have people that are you know doing this since they're like 10 years old i, I worked with someone once uh like one of the best hackers i've ever worked with he's literally been doing it since he was 10. <laughs> so <laughs> even wow. though on paper there's been like a couple of years in the industry uh yeah. actually in terms of skill set you know he was he was well beyond kind of anything that anyone would expect yeah. so yeah i mean i've been working professionally in this field um i think by the time i started di i've been working for four or five years uh, yeah. plus a couple of years uh, software development before that. Yeah. yeah. And, and what kind of made the final decision, the kind of nail in the coffin as such to, to go, right, I, I need to change this. I'm going to create a company here. What what can change the the way people look at cybersecurity? Was it the, when did you meet Saskia? Was it kind of a part of that relationship or was it something you decided on your own prior to that? It's something that's been in my mind for a long time. Yeah. Um, I'm not an entrepreneur like type person, <laughs> uh, but I've always disliked people telling me what to do. <laughs> uh, I think <laughs> that's, that's maybe, maybe that's one. Of, <laughs> maybe, maybe it is. Uh, I kind of see it more as just like this 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 hacker mentality. You know, I always yeah. want to break things and you know, fitting into the, the, the rules in front of me is not something that I, I find super easy. <laughs> so it's always been in my mind, but, you know, like not having anyone around me that's really done it before. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really know kind of what even the process was. But for me, it was just, it was this desire to break out of what security is currently doing, you know, this, yeah. this pen testing and, and um, providing lists of, of, of issues. Uh, it is something that I, I still do and it's a big part of our company, um, yeah. but it's not the only thing that we're doing. And it yeah. actually, kind of interestingly, when, when we started the company, uh, we didn't want to do any pen testing at all. We were really pushing this, uh, really? this thing called DevSecOps, right, yeah. which is adding security into the development pipeline. Um, I think we're a bit too early to that game, to be honest, because no one was buying that service. <laughs> so, but what they were asking for was the pen testing. So yeah. we started to add the pen testing back in uh, and actually redesigned our services to fit around that. Because uh, even though I know there are better ways for people to do security, uh, pen testing is still the thing that people are expecting. So, what, so we try to do it the other way. So we get in with the pen testing and then try to help them in other ways that we think could actually save them money um, in yeah. the longer term and, and protect their data and all the things, all the things why security are, are important. Have you found that, that that area then the DevSecOps is, is kind of developing uh, more over the years? So it's obviously been, you know, two or three years now since you started. It, has, that, has that developed? Are you finding it a bit more interesting that now? 
yeah yeah so a lot of uh, a lot of large companies now starting to to um to, to think about that we've done some consultancy for some of the big banks and things to help them yeah. with their DevSecOps. um we've we've we are seeing people um kind of be more interested in in that a lot of the tooling that's being created at the moment is is being uh, like around DevSecOps. so yeah. traditionally a lot of the security tooling has been developed for people like me you know pen testers hackers and things yeah. so they have very like archaic weird interfaces or you run them and you get this weird like blinking banner that you know makes it feel like you're you know in the matrix or something but, but they're not tools that are designed for developers and software testers yeah. um whereas now i i am starting to see security tools aimed at that market a bit more with the devsecops thing so a tool that i have used and i do use a lot is, a, is something called burp suite it's a proxy so it allows me to view the traffic between the browser and the, and the server um, a few years back, they added an API to it, so it could be controlled by a, uh, you know, some kind of build pipeline, so you can yeah. automate some scans. Uh, GitHub recently added in, and I say recently, as in the last few days, added in um, security code scanning uh, into their projects. It's not something I've looked at like properly yet, but it is again like in this, this step towards them. DevSecOps where. Yeah. Yeah. So security is being like a proactive thing. Security is something that actually helps companies to release um, sooner and, and quicker and more securely. And it's something, again, that, that we are actively thinking about. We do write security tools as well. And yeah. all of our tools are designed to, to help with this, this concept of, of like DevSecOps or, or like doing security early and often. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think from, from my, from my kind of, perspective and looking in on what, what you're you're doing there at DI, you, you really are kind of changing the way people view security. And like you say, it's not it's not reactive anymore. It, it is proactive. You, you've got the tools, you're building the tools, you're, you're actively looking at ways to protect people before they get the threat. But I mean, one thing what what does happen, and we, and we spoke about it before, um, you know, if someone comes to you and goes, or you go to someone and go, you have a security threat, how do how do the people react to that like how, how what's the best way to deal with that as well mm. so yeah that's uh that's an interesting one um, <laughs> so this is something that that you know i am a user i use software i use other like products um and i want them to be secure you know if i'm yeah. using something like like spotify i want it to be secure um yeah. I, I just use spotify as an example not that there's any like <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's just, it was the first icon I saw on my screen, <laughs> uh, that's fair uh, but I, I want these things to be secure. Right. So, um, something that, that people will do, you know, people like me, pen testers, hackers, uh, we will often look for vulnerabilities in software that either we're using or that we just might find interesting. You know, again, I, I like the challenge of this kind of stuff. Yeah. So if you do have a product and a company it is likely somebody will at some point take a look for security weaknesses people have even done it to us you know i i, I got an email a, a, a yes. year ago or so ago someone saying yeah like hey there's this uh security weakness in your in your website uh there wasn't obviously <laughs> it was <some> <laughs> positives um but the point is somebody did reach out because people are always looking uh so the mo again the motivation is a little different you know for me it's, it's i want to I might want to check the products I'm using, or it just might be interesting. Some people they are looking for a payout. You know, they, yeah. they, they will say, "Hey, I found this weakness. Um, will you give me any money, and I'll give you some more details?" So, wow. regardless of the motivation, people will be trying to report vulnerabilities to you, yeah. and you need to be able to know how to deal with it. Um, I think the first thing to realize is that the people reporting they're not trying to um, necessarily sell to you. You know, it's yeah. not just a sales thing. Um, it is somebody that is trying to highlight a, a vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So as an example, uh, I, can, I can point to two where, um, where this has kind of been relevant to, to what I've done. Um, the first one was a, um, this uh, adult virtual reality application, uh, if, if you can imagine what, what that would be like. <laughs> um, so it turned out that they were leaking a load of customer data on the internet, right? So. Uh, I took the application and reverse engineered it. Uh, and I found that there was a way to download the whole customer details, really. So take customers' email addresses, where they have paid for the application and things like that. So I tried to report this vulnerability to them. 
yeah. they ignored me for, for a little while. Um, eventually, with enough prodding and poking and, and trying to, you know, it, it was difficult for me to find who even to report it to. And that was yeah. the, like, the first thing, like make it easy for somebody to report these issues. So I had to spend days even just trying to find the email address of the people that I could contact. Um, I, I found their profiles on things like Reddit to even try and message them and say, hey, I need to speak to someone at your company. Uh, Twitter, like, I had to, to spend a lot of time just trying to find who to, to uh, report this vulnerability to. Yeah. Um, eventually, you know, they, they listened, um, they fixed it. Unfortunately, it was the, uh, it wasn't until after it was reported on the BBC that they actually were able to go and fix it because before then they, they, they again they were just kind of ignoring us or, or they didn't care and it wasn't until they got some media attention that they were they kind of forced to, to fix the issue um and then the second example uh there's this application called giggle which is a social media application um and the lady that uh runs it is um she's very aggressive towards criticism or you just leave yeah it, just say that oh uh, yes a lot, uh, a lot of people so don't like it. <laughs> uh, exactly exactly so when we tried to report this issue her first response was that we're just trolls um her application is 100 percent secure there's no problem um and the issue that we found would let uh would let somebody view the location of the users of this application yeah and um Again, you know, we, we wanted to report it because it's important that this thing gets fixed. And she completely ignored us. Um, there was a massive Twitter <laughs> like thing about it because a lot of the people in, in my uh, community, InfoSec, uh, yeah. started to respond and, hey, you know, listen to these guys that they know what they're doing. They're not just trolling you. And then all of her followers started to attack, you know, oh, wow. people from InfoSec. And it became yeah. <laughs> all because you know, we're trying to do what we feel was the right thing and yeah, highlight yeah, yeah. this issue. Um, so I'd say for anyone that is, is developing stuff, you know, make it easy to, for people to report it. Um, know what you're going to say to them if they do report something, you know, whether that's, oh, we're aware of this and it's a false positive or, oh, thank you, we'd like to have some more information. Uh, but, you know, be, be, be mindful that something like this will eventually happen and, you know, don't take it as a personal attack. Um, even yeah. if they ask for money, you don't, have to give them money and they're not necessarily trying to do it for like a sales thing sometimes it's just people wanting to make things more secure because yeah. either they use those products or um that you know they don't want the people that do use them to uh to, to have like their data leaked data uh, yeah because I, I don't know if you're aware of ashley madison which was another hack that happened a couple of years back um this was a dating website um mm. when all their data was leaked uh people actually did take their own lives because of, of they were embarrassed that this data was now public yeah. so there is a responsibility for companies to to protect that data and listen to people that are trying to to disclose this stuff yeah and i think i think it's definitely a, a growing concern of the public as well in general like you know especially with with gdpr coming in and, and i know it was a, a buzzword for a, a long period that um, but a lot of people are concerned, you know, they don't want their data being leaked, but it's, it's, it's out of their control really. And that's where the companies who are, who are doing it should, should be, should be locking that in and kind of looking after that and securing that. But some, a lot of companies, I mean, we recruit for quite a few who, who have their own, you know, teams and, and testers and, and infrastructure guys who, who kind of secure their, their websites and their business and their content and their, all the products, like you say. How do they react? Because obviously, you know, yes, they might have a team what what deals with that, but they, they might have missed something. It happens, you know. People people do miss things. Do you find you have a better response when you go listen? You know, you're talking to the head of security or whatnot, and you go, "You've got a leak. You've got a problem." Um, do you get a better response with them, or or do you get a better response from people who don't have a clue? really about that but we'll listen to you because you know it's that product they're worried about it so in my experience the ones that have some kind of uh, team that are dealing with that much easier to deal with yeah because, because they understand um that you know i'm not there just to cause trouble or mm. um you know i'm not just trying to 
you know yeah, money out of it. Out. yeah it, exactly exactly uh, and it also means that they the companies that do have a team uh yeah. they're the ones that are thinking about security already yeah. so yeah th there is definitely more of a like a process there versus you know something that's been developed by you know a, a single developer or even someone's you know paid to have some application developed where there's really yeah. no idea about like what even what security even is um yeah. so yeah it's, it's a lot easier it's a lot easier to deal with the people that so, have a team yeah you you mentioned then the, the guys who have started a business single developers or or you know we'll go out straight away to mention the startups and scale ups and, and small smes you know they're, they're the people obviously you you have quite a big target on them you know you you look at them and and try and and try and help them why is it you kind of went down that route then is it because they they don't necessarily make the product themselves sometimes or they don't understand it all that that entrepreneurs like yourself um and they just want to kind of build a product um and, and obviously scale a business do you find targeting them was something you actively did because you want to help them and, and help them succeed so uh, there's a couple of reasons really uh one and i hate to say this but one is is, is they're an easier target uh yeah. again a lot of my motivation is just because i enjoy this stuff you know i enjoy mm -hmm reverse engineering i enjoy looking at how things have been created and developed yeah. um and trying to, to kind of understand that uh usually the things that i look at um you know the, if we take an application that's had you know thousands and thousands of, of, of person hours put in to help like to make it secure that's going to be really hard for me to try and break versus yeah. something that's been you know written by by, by one developer so yeah. unfortunately that is that is part of it it's just easier targets um yeah. But the other thing is, yeah, definitely there are, uh, it's not that I necessarily want to help the companies. So um, both it, it, with the two examples that I mentioned, uh, I have no ties to those companies. I didn't use yeah. them, um, but people do. And yeah. it is something like, I don't like the idea of, of data being leaked that would cause some kind of um, problems to people. So yeah. in both those cases, in the case of the VR apps in VR, it would have been incredibly embarrassing for those people. And for the, the social media app, um, I won't go to the details about, about the app and the founders thoughts, but yeah. there would have been a lot of people on that app um, that were, <clears throat> that had signed up in almost in, in a form of protest. Yeah. And I felt like that those people did need to be protected because having their location details like put all over the internet would have would have caused um, would have caused some problems. Uh, the other the other users of that app would have been women that um, were in like like sensitive situations, so yeah. like maybe trying to flee abuse of relationship and stuff. Yeah. So when I when I it's saw important. this application, yeah. So when I saw this application, I thought, well, that's something that um, it is important that that data is is protected. Yeah. I mean, that says a lot about you, you know, obviously ethically, that is the right thing to do, like you said, but I guess there's these people out there what don't do that and, and look at the opposite. So, you know, you said easy target and, and it's a phrase, like you said, you know, you don't like to say it, but it, it, small startups might necessarily be easy targets. And that's how people who aren't as ethical as you and right minded, that's how the hackers will go. Well, they're an easy target. Let's target them. So I suppose it is really important that you do exactly the same, think like them, but obviously do it in the in the right way to protect people. Yeah, yeah. So it is it is true. Like the um one of the best things that you can do for your security is just be harder to hack than your competitor. <laughs> you yeah. know, if 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 your app is um is even a little bit difficult. So again, if you don't mind, I'll give another example. There's an application. Yeah. Um it was this Thomas the Tank Engine application, right? So uh, you install it in your phone, your kid talks to Thomas, Thomas talks back, really, really like simple stuff. Yeah. Uh, they actually had what's called a bug bounty. And the bug bounty means that they actually allow people to hack their applications and assuming they go through the process, so you, know, you report it correctly, um, et cetera, then um, they will actually give, like they will pay for that, for that vulnerability. This is how a lot, of, um, a lot of people make money doing security things when they're not, when they're not, necessary professional pen testers or, or, or things like that. They just look for vulnerabilities in companies that have this bug bounty. Yeah. So they had a bug bounty. So they're actively saying, hey, look for vulnerabilities and report it. Um, but I don't think many people had looked for vulnerabilities in that because to get past the first hurdle, 
was actually pretty difficult. So it's an yeah. Android application. It means you first have to understand how to, to look for weaknesses in Android apps. Then they had a load of these security protections in place. They had like this thing called certificate pinning, uh, mutual TLS, like these, these, these other things that yeah. um, meant that, again, like another step you had to break before you could even start looking for the security weaknesses. Yeah. And because they had these things, even though they were inviting people to look for weaknesses, people hadn't because it was a bit too difficult compared to yeah. the other targets. So, you know, again, I looked at it just because um, it was like an interesting application to me. I mm -hmm. found some weaknesses, I reported it um, and got a bit of a payout, which was nice. Nicer to get a payout than, you yeah, know, push down to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, so, 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 yeah, it's, oh, man, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Yeah, the well, payouts do that, don't they? Sometimes, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, I think about all that money. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess the 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 route we're going down here is, you know, for, for me, you clearly know what you're talking about. Obviously, you create business around it. it. It goes without saying. But there's people out there what what don't um, know about this and don't know enough about it. So, what would you say? How, how do people kind of? I'll just touch on this quickly. How do people get in touch with you? And 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 what's the best way to kind of say listen i think i need to to get my product tested and, and checked and and what's the process for that so um i would say i would tell people how to contact me soon but before you even think about contacting someone like me yeah. um make sure your products are at least at the minimum level of secure and you yeah. can do that without even bringing in an expert the reason i say that is because if you come to me with a product that's not even been like security has not even been considered at all mm. i'm going to find hundreds of issues and I'm going to leave yeah. you with a report where you've got to go through, understand them, fix them. Yeah. Like it's, and it's going to, it's going to be stressful. It's not the most efficient way. Yeah. Um, it'd be easy for me to do. So like, <laughs> I would be happy to do it, yeah. but it's not the best use of money, you know, and you know, I'm expensive, you know, pen testing yeah. is an expensive thing. Yeah. So the first thing that I would say is think about what your budget is for security. The way that I like to think about it is how much would you pay not to be in the papers for having a data breach and that will give you some kind of idea yeah yeah because you know for some applications for some people actually it's not that important you know maybe they've, they've made uh you know a, a brochureware application that doesn't take any user details or whatever in which case security budget should be minuscule like it, it doesn't matter too much if you're a bank if you're doing a fintech or something actually your budget should be a lot higher because you know again to be in the news for a data breach would be a big deal yeah so try and use that to think about what your your budget should be um first thing there are techniques you can use there's something called threat modeling with a threat model you don't even need to be a technical person to do that what you want to try and do is think about how somebody might attack your your, your products or your application so think okay so you know for example um we're you know we're doing this with the data um Someone might try to access it this way. Maybe we'll try and, um, you know, sit in this part of the network and because it's, uh, and then they might be able to read the data going backwards or forwards, or maybe they can try and brute force this password here because yeah. we don't have any like brute force protection. If you do this for like long enough, you'll start to get a list of um, security weaknesses that are inherent in your product. Like, like I said, brute force uh, is probably a good example. So, you know, if, if you're developing something or you're working with the developers, you think, okay, well, someone needs to log into the application. How many times can they log in? How yeah. complex should the password be? What if someone manages to guess someone's password? What should happen then? And you'll build up this, this big list of, of yeah, security weaknesses that you can either address or not address or find some way to mitigate. Um, and I would encourage people, again, to to do this process even if you're not technical sometimes yeah. with some of our clients who aren't technical they come up they come up with some of the best attacks to be honest i was <laughs> dealing with one customer once and they um what was they saying so because i didn't understand their company as, as well as they did obviously because you know they work there um we were talking about some threats and they said oh someone could call the call center and um pretend to be a user and then they could get this code and then they could do this with this other part of the system but like, that's wow. amazing. Like I would have yeah, yeah, yeah. That. So you don't need to be like technical at all to come up with these these attacks. Um, but it gives you something to, to work towards. Yeah. So once you start doing that, then you start thinking about 
secure development. So doing like continuous security scans of your applications, mm -hmm. having developers that that know what they're doing. So security is a measure of like another quality thing, just like you wouldn't want to have code that's too slow. You don't want code that's too insecure. So find the developers that, that, that do understand this, that can use these tools, that can do scans. Um, and at that point, when you're sure you have um, covered all those, all the low hanging fruit, then yeah. you can bring in someone like me, someone to, to come and look for the things that, you know, the tools can't find or things that do require the expertise um, to, to find those vulnerabilities. Yeah, yeah. And, and if people do want to want to contact me, um, as you said, Digital Interruption yeah. is, is the company, you know, that has our contact form all over the website. And my email address is email at digitalinterruption.com. So J-A-H-M-E-L. And we'll, we will pop that below. Uh, and obviously I'll tag, I'll tag you in this when, when it's obviously released. Um, and we'll make sure we, we get all your contact details out there. Because I think it is a really important subject. And I think it's it's now more than ever in today's society, cybersecurity is massive. Uh, and and from my point of view, I didn't I didn't know enough about it. Um, and I'll openly say, I think just sat here today listening to you has been massively insightful. I'm hoping it will be the same for, for people out there. I mean, I read one of your posts, I was saying to you before, I read one of your posts the other day. And honestly, it went straight over my head. I was like, I have no, like, there's a lot of, a lot of information in there. And security, obviously, is so important, but it, I don't think people know enough. And I think that's where, you know, they should definitely kind of speak to someone like yourself. And, and especially if you're going to start a business, you know, you want it to be secure. Um, and yeah. even if it's just a, a chat with you to, to find out a bit about where you, you know, the, the angle you think you should go at and, and, and approach it starting a business. I think it's massive. I think it's absolutely it's so important. So definitely, guys, if you know if you are starting a business or you have started and you've got a product out there, definitely connect with Jay and and you know have a chat with him and and, and discuss it in, in more detail and, and with the guys at Digital Interruption. Um, so, so but, one thing I said before um, yeah. was that you know we we do pen testing, um, but really what we are aiming to do is make security easier for people. Um, yeah. So one service that we, we have created um, that we think would, would be a bit more beneficial to companies that are just starting out is mm. this virtual security SME, so um, subject matter expert. Um, so with that service, so for context, for people that may not know, a pen test can be over a thousand pounds per day. Um, yeah. We charge significantly less because we're a lot smaller than some of the other <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but, um, but pen testing could be really, really expensive. Yeah. Uh, what we have instead is this um, virtual security expert service where we'll join your Slack groups, um, like your Slack channel, and we'll just be there in case you need to ask us for like questions. Um, like if you, if you don't understand like how this thing is happening or you need some, uh, some advice on how to do something securely, drop us a message and we'll respond. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. something we've created. It's, it's, it's a lot cheaper than pen testing. Um, yeah. You can have it like as and when you need it. So, you know, if you sign up for a month, you will be there to help answer questions and things. Um, and that, that's something that we think works a bit better for the companies yeah. that are just starting out, you know, it's a fixed fee per month. Um, we'll be there, provide some support and some guidance as and when it's needed. Yeah, which is, I think it's an amazing idea. And yeah, definitely, definitely get in touch and, and get signed up for that because there's nothing more important than, than securing the, the information of, of your customers. So. That, that is definitely massive. I mean, one thing I do want to touch on, mate, is uh, I want to kind of get that entrepreneur head on, which I know you, you kind of stay away from. But in terms of your journey then from 2017, uh, for, for the guys out there who, who might be starting a business and, and, and so on, you know, what, what's been the most challenging thing then, like growing, growing, especially something like yourself, you know, it's quite disruptive. It's different to what other people are doing. Like, how have you, how have you gone about starting that off? Obviously, you adapted your... You model. You said you, you know, you originally you were focused on that, and then you you kind of brought in pen testing more. What kind of challenges have you faced, and how did you? Oh, so many, yeah. and we're still <laughs> facing challenges. Uh, as I said, you know, I'm I'm not a, a business person. I have no experience with running a company, um, with with any of this really. So for me, it's just been about learning all those things learning which things to outsource and which things to do in-house that's something that we still struggle with yeah. um you know we've outsourced things in the past that we should have done in-house and then we've done yeah. things in-house that we should have outsourced um 
trying to understand the market as well. You know, my background is security and, and pen testing and hacking and things. Um, you can't sell pen testing to other pen testers. <laughs> so yeah. you know, I'm trying to figure out how to um, present myself to the people that we're trying to sell to is, is, is being really hard. Um, you know, I, I've gone through loads of different um, like titles you know, yeah. like I, I don't, I, at the beginning, I was calling myself a, a security consultant. Um, yeah. Because effectively, you know, that's what I am. But a consultant, I always felt like what uh, people were always on the back foot, like I was trying to sell to them when often yeah. I'm just talking about security because it's what I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, but you know, they, they were always like, oh, consultant, you know. Um, I, I called myself a penetration tester. If you've never dealt with security before and this kind of area, uh, someone calling themselves a penetration tester is a really, really weird title. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but hey, I'm I'm Jay. I'm I'm the penetration tester, and they're like, yeah. "Whoa, what?" what? Yeah, so, no, I, I I moved, yeah. So I moved away from that. Um, what I use currently is Ethical Hacker. Uh, I think yeah. it, it kind of more describes what I do to people that may not be so familiar. Um, in the in the infosec community, we do hate the term ethical hacker because it, it implies that a hacker is not ethical when really you know that's not the case. But as a business person, I need to think more about you know the people that I, I am dealing with day to day and trying to learn the language that that works best for them. You know, yeah. Things around marketing and sales is still stuff we're trying to work out. I actually uh, I came across an old advert like the first advert we'd put up on LinkedIn. Um, I came across that the other day, uh, just, just yesterday, actually. And it's so embarrassing. Like, our brand, <laughs> our, 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 like we've got this really horrible logo. Um, just really? the, 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 <laughs> yeah, the ad is just, I, was, I just looked at it, I was like, what are we thinking? And I know in a year's time, I'm going to look back to the stuff we're putting out today yeah. and say the same thing. What was I thinking? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a continuous you know, learning thing. I was lucky to have Saskia. Uh, she is, again, she, she's, Similar to me, doesn't really um, have much experience running a, a company. She's always been a like a contractor, so yeah. um, she does have experience, you know, at least uh, kind of like with the tax and, and stuff like that. Um, but you know, never had any staff or anything. Yeah. So you know, in in, in that regard, um, it, it, you know, it wasn't. We both had to learn the same stuff. Yeah, but yeah. having someone to like bounce ideas off of someone that has slightly different experiences um that was that was really helpful especially in the beginning yeah um, you know now we're at the point where we've we have both grown beyond beyond kind of what our experience is and we, we're just trying to trying to figure yeah. out as we go um yeah. so yeah I, I wish there was a a kind of no a better answer i could give but yeah, yeah. i mean I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> I hope <think, it's> <laughs> I think the honesty, mate, is, is is perfect. I mean, that's what people want out there. You know, they want a, they don't want to hear, oh, yeah, it's, it's a breeze. You, you go, it's no problem. Start the business tomorrow. You know, just contact me. I'll do your testing and whatnot, and you know, we'll we'll go for it, and it's fine. But I think it's important people know it is the challenges, and there are challenges. But one thing you said, and one thing every kind of person who's been on the podcast has said is people uh, and having someone to bounce ideas off and have that sounding board whether it'll be you know an agency you you hire to help that growth or or a co-founder or a non-executive director i think it's really important to have that to to bounce ideas off and kind of push the company forward um yeah, what i mean sure definitely people people is important in, in terms of then the future we, we talked about that you know um where 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 do you see the company direction going? Uh, obviously, would you are you going to push it back into kind of the DevSecOps as well? Um, mm. And where, where's the future lie with with DI? Yeah, so um, there are there are things that we're we're trying out. You know, things that we think would work better for people. So we are creating more software products as well, at the moment. Yeah. Um, again, pen testing whilst it can be really useful and it's something that I, you know, I, I do encourage people to do when they're ready for it. Um, it is also expensive and time, time consuming. So we feel like software products that security testing um, is, is really going to be more beneficial to more people. So we're just releasing a product now called Rex, um, which is a Android vulnerability, uh, Android application vulnerability scanner. Yeah. The idea is that you can just, upload your android app to the website 
and it will do a load of security checks and then tell you what weaknesses it found. That way you can, you know, you can do your scans as, as often as you want. You know, every time yeah. you change some code, get it scanned. Um, mm. Every every time you're about to release, get it scanned. Make sure that there's no, like, no obvious issues in it. Um, yeah. Again, it doesn't replace pen testing. Pen testing will find different issues, but That's pen awesome. testing requires, like, the skills and expertise, whereas this is something that you can just scan for, um, for not much money. We're still trying to figure out the price point because we're, we're still um, we're just going out of, of beta into yeah. um, like into release. Um, so we're still trying to figure all the commercial side of things out. But you know, it's a it's a really useful tool that will um, I think will help people. So that is kind of where I'd like to go as a company. I'd like to still do the pen testing. You know, and I want yeah. that to be one side of what we do. You know, this very like high quality um, yeah. personal security testing for like manual security testing but then we also want to get like, products out there that people can use when either they don't have the budget for a manual test or when maybe their product just doesn't need a manual test maybe all they need is, is more of like this uh make sure that there's no low-hanging fruit make sure that everything yeah, yeah. Like, everything that can easily be found is found yeah so that, that, that's, that's, an, that's an android android one is it it's Android for the moment. We're going to expand yeah. that to iOS in the future. I was, going to say, um, and... I was going to say, do you find the mobile development side of things? Obviously, we see a lot more people looking for for people with experience with you know Android or iOS and, and developers out there. Do you find that's that's a growing sector then as well for, for yeah. yourselves? It is, and it's something that um, I actually I, I've got a lot of experience with. Um, when I started working in security, um, mm. there wasn't actually many people that were interested in interested in hacking Android applications. Um, but for me, I, I loved it. I always thought it was so interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when you are hacking an Android app, you get to do reverse engineering, which I love. You get to do like web application stuff because the app, the app will communicate with some web API. Yeah. So you get to hack that part. As well. There's the operating system on the phone, it's, which you get to, to hack. Like it has all these different components that just yeah, yeah. for me, it's just so interesting. I don't know why other security people aren't so excited about um hacking mm -hmm. android apps i love how passionate you are about it it's, it's, oh yeah it's I, I find it's it so interesting yeah. um and then with ios like very similar um the problem with ios is that it's uh it's harder to get an environment set up yeah. so I, i've got my environment here for hacking uh, ios applications i've got um, a mac here i've got a, a, a iphone that's jailbroken so i can really do like that deep dive into things yeah but to do that is it's you know it's so complex to get the iphone um that i'm using i had to go into a, a second hand phone shop and i had to get the lady behind the counter to turn on every single iphone they had to make <laughs> sure that it was running the version that i needed that i could jailbreak wow <laughs> yeah it was I like and she was like what are you doing i'm like please just just please can you just try that one can you just try that one and then is after that a good I thing, then is that is, does that mean that I, the, the iphones are a little bit more secure would you say then no, so it's almost the opposite. So with certain, oh, right. versions, <laughs> yeah, with certain versions, you can break the security of the of the phone, which oh. allows me as the pen tester to yeah. analyze the applications a bit easier. So for example, if I wanted to, um, let's say I wanted to reverse engineer the application, right? From, from so I install the app from the, uh, from the yeah. Apple store. Um, then if I want to reverse it, I need to get that app off the phone so I can put it onto my computer where I can analyze it in more depth. Yeah. with with um like with a non-broken iphone you can't really get the application off of it right so you can't analyze it with some of the other tools and techniques that i use so i need to have a certain version that's been jailbroken uh, which means that i can get that, that application off so that yeah. i can analyze it to then look for the weaknesses that might be present yeah so with can... android to do that really easy um you just buy you know a 90 pound phone off of amazon you take it home you root it um then you can you can do these these things because they let you do it you know android tends to be a bit more open so if you want to do it you can do it but with um with apple they, they're more closed they don't let you do those things so you need yeah. to get certain versions where people have found like flaws that do let you do that so yeah so it's just a lot harder to do the iOS stuff um so yeah. You get you find even fewer people are, are looking at those. 
Yeah, listen, Jay, I could sit here, I could genuinely sit here for another hour and, and go through things. I'm actually really enjoying this and, and I can see how passionate you are and it's kind of rubbing off on me a little bit now. So Thanks. I'm really interested and, and I'm personally going to endeavour to, to find out a little bit more and I really hope in, in a year's time or, or six months to a year's time, something like that, we can get you back on, find out yeah, how yeah. things have changed and see how obviously cybersecurity is he's changing one thing i did want to touch on as well i noticed you also have a podcast uh, i'm not afraid to, to name other podcasts on here so it's fine um but yeah what, what's that about i just want to you know people looking to to listen and find out more yeah you know, and, and find out stuff like this so um it's really new we've only had released one episode um mm -hmm. we're actually going to be recording our second episode um, i think early next week to be released okay. on the 26th so, assuming so that yeah. goes to plan yeah um so yeah we, we talk about it's just me and some, some friends are really just talking about security things yeah. um we talk a bit about some of like the culture around cyber security so yeah. in the first episode we spoke about our handles which is like your hacker name every hacker will have a handle um, yeah. something they came up with when they were like 14 <laughs> so, you know, something that's kind of kind of lame now but something yeah. you know, that people know them by um so we talk a bit about the history of hacking how hacking's changed, um, and, and just our thoughts on, on current like security topics. So we're going to be talking about uh, the the Windows XP source code leak uh, yeah. in the next episode, as well as some of the Microsoft uh, vulnerabilities that have been uh, been released uh, over the last couple of days. Nice. Um, but on on the topic, I, I also run a group called Manchester Grey Hats, uh, where we at least pre-COVID, um, we're still figuring out how we're going to do things post-COVID, yeah. but pre-COVID we ran uh, workshops like free to, to attend. And this isn't, you know, trying to um, uh, trying to advertise the company or anything like that. I actually started Grey Hats before I started the company, but we run free workshops on how to hack things just because it, nice. I, I like it so much. So um, how to hack websites, how to hack mobile phones. Um, we've even done workshops on how to hack radio waves. So you know, like all these like signals yeah. going through the air. So, um, you know, like, people have, uh, like, you know, when you have like a, um, a car, right? You have the, yeah. the button to unlock the, the car. We talk about the weaknesses that are, are involved with that, how you go analyze those signals. Um, wow. So ultimately what you could do is figure out how to unlock the car without having to press the button. Uh, yeah. So- That know, would not be right, people out there. Do, do, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're not advising that, but no. So, well, I mean, I, I would advise it if it's your car and you just want to do it for fun. Um, <laughs> We actually, in, in the workshop, we actually use a, a wireless doorbell because uh, I think that's a little bit, the worst you could do is maybe maybe make someone's doorbell ring without yeah, that's uh, all right. pressing the button first. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but like the security of these things is what's important, right? And actually, I, I believe that it's important for us to know where the weaknesses are because somebody else will. So just, I mean, just very quickly with the car thing, um, people are using these to, to steal cars, right? So yeah. if you have your, your key with a uh, keyless entry, um, and you have your key by your front door, which most people do when they go home at night, they put their key by their front door. Um, there have been people that have been using some of these techniques to relay that keyless unlock signal by, by your front door. So you have some Yeah, I think I've seen door. that. I, I have yeah, seen, you know, the, the CCTV video exactly. that you get on Facebook and stuff sometimes. Yeah. I think I've seen that. Yeah. Exactly. And I really believe it's, it's better that we know that these things are happening so we can yeah. protect ourselves than to you know, pretend that they're not because yeah. the attackers are going to be doing it regardless of whether we, we want to, we, we, you know, we understand the techniques. I like to understand the techniques. So we do, we do show these things. Of course, yeah. the whole, the whole point of, of the, the greatest meetup is um, we do it in a safe and legal way because yeah. hacking can be illegal. You know, yeah. you're not allowed to access people's data unless you've been given permission to do it. And that is one thing we stress um, because I was lucky, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, I had a, a, a mentor really that encouraged me to do things in the legal and safe way. Because if I yeah. didn't, I probably would have went down a different route. And yeah, I, I want to be, I want to be there to help people become, uh, you know, to do the kind of things that I'm doing. Yeah. So, so yeah, if people are interested, you know, take a, take a look at Grey Hats. We do try to live stream our things. Again, yeah. you know, post COVID, we're going to see how things will work. Um, maybe we'll do some live streams or something. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, we'll, we'll see. What I, I think it's. I mean, it's really interesting, uh, and it kind of brings, like you said, the, the little boy, the, the nerdy little boy, and everyone. I think everyone's got that. I always yeah. just thought you have to be really, really smart to, to hack and do things like that. So I never got involved, but I think it's amazing. I think it's really cool. Um, so and you don't I, need to be too smart to do it. I'm not that smart. <laughs> I'm, I'm just <laughs> it's stubborn. too late now. I'm, bad. I'm not. I'm too old. But yeah, no, I definitely, definitely going to listen in though at least. And, and I think it does it gauge that kind of curiosity in, in everyone. So I, I'll certainly be listening. And obviously, I'll, it, hopefully, post-COVID, you never know, I might even attend a, attend a workshop and work out. I'd love to, to hack, see you there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, no, listen, mate, it's been been amazing having you on the show, uh, genuinely. And, and I hope we can get you back on 100% down the line and, and have another chat and go through you know what's changed in the cybersecurity world and and find out a bit more but again i just want to say thank you so much for coming on today um no you know and we'll, we'll definitely set something up again uh, so thank you again jay thanks cheers mate so guys that's it uh an amazing podcast i enjoyed it i hope you saw that one when we were on the show um and I, i'm very very interested in getting jay back on the show uh, i think it's really insightful something a little bit different um and i'm hoping you guys enjoy it too uh so please do comment let me know follow the page connect with me um and if you'd like to be on the show as well you know drop me an email let me know give me a call my number's on my profile you can get in touch with me anytime let me know I'd, I, anyone out there who started a business those in the trenches at the moment those who are looking to start, they're, they're the people I want to speak with. Um, and if we can provide some insight from a company who is he's 15 years old, 20 years old, to those people starting as well, then very interested to have you on. But thank you so much, guys, for, for watching today and or listening if you did. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the content. Cheers.